from the 12th to the 14th of December. Heinrich Himmler is part of Army Group Oberrhein would launch Unternehmen Habicht, or Operation Hawk. The purpose for this was twofold. One, to act as a distraction in the southern and eastern part of France to draw the Allies' attention well away from the preparations for Wacht am Rhein and the assault or the counteroffensive by the Germans through the Ardennes, but also to continue to secure the Colmar pocket region and prevent the Americans from crossing over the Alsace Plain, the Rhine River, and then into Germany itself. Hill 351 would play a really important role in this operation. At the start of December, we saw that in a previous video that a company from the 141st Infantry Regiment of the 36th Infantry Division came over this hill and assaulted down into the village there uh, of Sigelsheim. That attack, as we know, didn't go too well, but because of the American presence in the area, the 36th Infantry Division did hold Hill 351. And it was during Operation Hawk that the Germans attempted to take this hill and secure it for their own strategic purposes. So Himmler would divide his forces into three battle groups, east, middle, and west. And they would strike at strategic points between Kaiserberg down the valley to the west and Colmar to the east. So one of the objectives of Grenadier Regiment 326 and the 2nd Battalion of Grenadier Regiment 1213 was Mont Sigelsheim here, which was 351. The other hill further on this hilltop saddle was Hill 393, and that was one of their other objectives that they had to take. So on the morning of the 12th of December 1944, the hilltop here was held by 2nd Battalion from the 141st Infantry Regiment of the 36th Infantry Division. The Germans put the attack in at 0700 that morning, whilst it was still uh, dark as the sun was starting to come up. They advanced up the hill, but the Americans, they were well dug in, they were prepared and they were ready for them. However, it did get close, there was hand-to-hand -hand fighting, but the Americans managed to repulse the attack and the Germans fell back to their start lines. So the following morning on the 13th of December 1944, the Germans put in a heavy preparatory bombardment from their own artillery onto Hill 351 and 393. Going again for a 0700 start, the Germans advanced up the south side of the hill, but again met fierce American resistance. More hand-to-hand -hand fighting ensued, but yet again, the American defenders from the 141st Infantry Regiment managed to push the Germans back and break up their attack. One last concerted attack from the Germans on the 14th would see them eventually wear down the American defenders here and take the hill finally, allowing them to dig in and properly secure not only Hill 351 here in the east, but Hill 393 further to the west, which had commanding views to the north, to the south, and to the east, out over the Alsace Plain. And they were ready for the Americans when they came back. As a result of Operation Hawk, the three-day counter-offensive launched by Himmler, it was decided that the 36th Infantry Division from the US Army would be with, withdrawn from the Kaiserberg sector and moved further north to a location where the German resistance was less fierce, enabling them to get some rest and recuperate somewhat, but while still in contact with the enemy. Replacing the 36th Infantry Division would be the 3rd Infantry Division, or the Rock of the Marne as they were known. They'd landed in southern France, in August 1944 as part of Operation Dragoon and then fought all the way up through the south of France through the Vosges mountains and were now going to be tasked with taking and holding the village of Sigelsheim and ensuring that that key strategic village along with Hill 351 would no longer be in German hands. So on the morning of the 23rd of December at 0730 the 15th Infantry Regiment moved off from the village of Keitzheim, which is further to the west toward Kaiserberg from where I'm stood here. They pushed in, moving toward the east, and they met stiff resistance from the Germans that were dug in on this hill. As you can see from here, there is a commanding view out toward the west, and there is absolutely no way of moving any sort of amount of men and armor along that valley without being noticed from this position here. 
A Company did manage to break through the German defensive lines in the uh, village of Sigelsheim. However, the Germans quickly regrouped and as a result of the weight of fire that A Company came under, they had to quickly withdraw, um, not to mention as well the counterattack that the Germans put in uh, from Hill 351 onto their positions in the village. So it was after this initial attack by 1st Battalion from the 15th Infantry Regiment that Hill 351 would need to be taken and that this unenviable task would fall to them to carry out. Now defending here were uh, 200 approximately Waffen-SS troops from the Junker Führerschule, so their junior leader school, as well as other Wehrmacht troops. They were well dug in, the position up here was well suited to defence and the Germans are naturally good at that anyway. They had artillery, mortars and machine guns dug in all around this hilltop. On the morning of the 24th of December 1944, A and C Company from the 1st Battalion of the 15th Infantry Regiment were given the task of capturing Hill 351 from the Germans. During the assault, A Company made it up to the top of the hill twice and both times were repulsed as a result of the German mortar and machine gun fire uh, that was raining down upon them. For the rest of the 24th and into the 25th of December 1944, Hill 351 remained in the hands of the Germans. But that night, Lieutenant Colonel Ware, the CO of the 1st Battalion, 15th Infantry Regiment, was given orders to take his battalion into the attack against the hill at 0630 on the morning of the 26th of December. So on the morning of the 26th, Lieutenant Colonel Ware and his men from B Company would attack from the village of Reekvere, heading from the north toward the south, up the slopes of Hill 351. They made it so far up, but then came under very heavy mortar, artillery, machine gun and rifle fire from the German positions. At this point, B Company, being under strength, desperately needed reinforcements. So a runner was sent to battalion headquarters and Lieutenant Colonel Ware organised uh, a party of 25 men to go up and reinforce B Company and help put in the attack. It was upon arriving at the location and seeing the desperation of his men that Lieutenant Colonel Ware knew something had to be done. Going from foxhole to foxhole, encouraging his men, and then going forward and engaging the Germans, Lieutenant Colonel Ware would later win the Medal of Honor for his actions here on Hill 351 on the 26th of December, 1944. And that action is actually covered in another episode that you can find on my channel. So late on in the afternoon, 1st Battalion would put the final attack in against Hill 351 and the Germans dug in here. Assisted by their buddies in 2nd Battalion who put in a fire support mission onto the hill, they were eventually in a position to be able to clear out the Germans who were sent retreating away from the hill and back toward their positions in the village of Sigelsheim. The Germans would later name this hill Bloody Hill. The, uh, the Americans knew it as Christmas Hill, but by the 26th of December, Hill 351 was finally in American hands, ready for the assault on Sigelsheim village itself. So the assault on Sigelsheim village itself was planned for the morning of the 27th of December. Third battalion of the 141st Infantry Regiment would be the battalion going into the attack, with the first battalion sat on top of Hill 351 to provide fire support as necessary. K and L companies would encircle the village from the east and west and G Company attached would circle round to the south and provide a blocking force there. So effectively on the north you'd have 1st Battalion on Hill 351 providing fire support, K and L companies coming from the east and west and then G Company at the south trapping the Germans into this village enabling the Americans to go house to house if necessary and clear them out. So around midday the Germans were still putting up very stiff resistance, as had A Company from the 1st Battalion, 141st Infantry Regiment, uh, but a few days before. So in the building behind me, this was a schoolhouse held by Major Voltner of Grenadier Regiment 1212 of the Wehrmacht. Now it was here on the 27th of December 1944 that he and his men put up really stiff resistance against the American forces advancing into the town. He managed to hold off this position and L Company's attacks for the whole day. But as the day drew on and under constant shelling from um, American tanks that had brought up into this area, as well as machine gun fire, he made the decision to break out from the position and try and save the men that he had under his command. So at about 6 p.m. in the evening of the 27th, under the cover of darkness, 
from the western side of the building out through a window, he and his men carrying only their rifles and basic equipment made their way under heavy machine gun fire away from the building and broke out from Sigelsheim village. It was later on that Major Volnout would be accused of cowardice and court-martialed as a result because SS Obersturmführer Leitner, who was also fighting in the village, managed to break through the American lines from his position in the village to get to the schoolhouse only to find it abandoned. However, Volnout was actually uh, acquitted and later um, given a, a bravery award for his actions here in the village in um, the middle of 1945 in recognition of what he'd done here with his men. By the evening of the 27th of December, most of the German presence here in Sigelsheim had been cleared out. And by the morning of the 28th of December, the whole of the village was safely in American hands. So signs of the battle can still be found in Sigelsheim village today. Um, it's very obvious on this church here in the center of the village with all the bullet marks, just how ferocious the fighting was here. So if you've enjoyed this episode of World War II Wayfinder, please hit that subscribe button and follow me for lots more stories of battlefields of Europe in World War II. See you in the next one.